On early 12th of January, US and Britain struck Houthi targets in response to Houthi shipping lane attacks. From November 2023 onward, Houthi movement military performed some 20 attacks on commercial shipping using kamikaze drones and small ballistic missiles. But what the Houthis seem to have used so far is just a small piece of their overall arsenal. As the US strikes so far seem limited, a question arises. What sort of missiles do the Houthis have and if they decide to hurt the US forces nearby, what could they do? Since the 2014 civil war and subsequent claim on power, the Houthi movement has held large military parades in Yemen. Its most recent one in September 2023 once again showed a wide array of weapons. Most of those are Iranian-designed missiles, including their best and latest. This video will go over what Houthis may use and how effective those weapons may be if they go directly after US forces. The Red Sea is boiling with tension. Houthis are equipped with advanced Iranian anti-ship missiles which can sink even modern warships. With rapid, often unverified information and dramatic headlines, understanding the real impact of potential warfare in these strategic waters is crucial for global security. That's why resources like Ground News are so important. They're sponsoring this video and their app and website shows data that remains obfuscated in the mainstream media. Ground News makes it easy to get all sides of the story in one place. If we look at this story on US ultimatum to Houthis, we can see there's 58 sources reporting on it with the left and the right covering it similarly. And when we look closer, we can also see when and where from around the world were these stories published. I also love this bit where I can see who owns which publication. Something else that's helpful is the blind spot feature. It lets me see stories which are being under or over reported from one side. If you only get your news from certain sources, you could miss some of these stories altogether. Ground News is a valuable tool to help me sift through the news quicker. Check it out by going to ground.news slash binko. Subscribe through my link for 30% off unlimited access or for just $1 a month. US and British strikes, according to defense officials, targeted very specific Houthi targets pertaining to their ability to harm the shipping lanes radars, drone and missile storage, as well as launch sites. Some air defense sites were also hit, though. In the hours preceding the strikes, Houthis fired more missiles into the Gulf of Aden, which might have triggered the strikes. But the US issued an ultimatum to Houthis 10 days earlier, because Houthi attacks were disrupting the world's shipping lanes. There is currently widespread panic among commercial shipping companies. Not all are willing to risk passage through the Red Sea. Said route is quite important for the world's economy, especially for Europe. It accounts for 12 to 15 percent of global shipping traffic, but the majority of Euro Asian trade goes through there, well over 50 percent, and roughly a quarter of all of Europe's shipping trade goes through it. Attacks made the shipping insurance companies wary of insuring the ships, with insurance premiums going several times higher, and sometimes those were not available at all. Out of over 3,000 ships, that were supposed to go through the Red Sea since November 19th, some 2,000 or so were rerouted. Out of the remaining 1,000, some 17 ships recorded Houthi attack attempts. One, the hijacking of the ship Galaxy Leader, resulted with the worst consequences so far. All 25 crew members are still being held somewhere in Yemen as hostages. But other attacks, using missiles and kamikaze drones, curiously caused little damage. So far, there have been no reports of ships' cruise casualties. At least 16 ships were targeted by early January, but five were missed completely during attacks. Seven didn't suffer any noticeable damage or the damage was minor. Only four had some sort of medium damage which resulted in a fire, which was quickly put out on all four, with three of those ships continuing their route and only one of those having to plan an unscheduled port call. While 4 out of 16 commercial ships targeted suffered drone attacks, 12 were targeted by missiles, which are larger. Houthi drones used were by and large in the class of Iranian Shahid drones, so their warheads are small, at 60 to 100 pounds, having an effect roughly comparable to one of a 155mm artillery round. One could see how such a warhead is not going to do meaningful damage to a huge commercial ship even if it manages to actually hit the ship and not, say, the containers on the ship. Houthis often used more than just one ballistic missile per ship, 
with often just one managing a hit, and in some instances, multiple missiles fired managed no hits. While the US ships did shoot down two cruise missiles, it appears that pretty much all munitions reaching the cargo ships were drones and ballistic missiles, not subsonic cruise missiles. Cruise missiles have been the mainstay of anti-ship missiles for decades. Harpoon, Exocet and so on are examples of it. Houthis do have such missiles. They showed off their Soviet era P-15, Iranian slash Chinese C-801 called the al manda by Houthis, and later Iranian indigenous designs like Sahil and Said missile, which is a Quds cruise missile equipped with radar for anti-shipping missions. None of those seem to have been used, even though some of those likely have decent guidance and their warheads are usually quite large and potent. One possible explanation is that their subsonic nature means such missiles would be more easily intercepted. That may be true, but the Allies' coverage of the seas near Yemen is far from perfect. It's not just the Red Sea that needs coverage, but also Gulf of Aden. Their Somali pirates have been a decades-long threat, so various countries have been deploying their warships there. Houthis have also conducted some of their attacks listed in this video in the Gulf of Aden, like the drone attack on cargo ship Simi, which happened south of Oman. It's not known if Iran and the Houthis were piloting the drone used for the attack. By early January, some 100 to 200 miles away from Houthi-controlled territory, there were over a dozen military ships on patrol capable of area air defense. US ships were in South Red Sea and around the Strait, including an aircraft carrier near Djibouti. Farther out in the Gulf of Aden, there were Chinese and Indian ships, south of Yemen and Oman, as well as a ship or two from the UK, France, South Korea, Japan and Spain. Most of those ships can see a low-flying cruise missile some 10 or so miles away, which means they can't really establish a foolproof fence around Yemen. There are simply too few ships. There would have to be like 40 ships on station and fully alert, with 40 more ships replacing them every few months. World's navies are simply not prepared to go to such an expense, nor are they unified enough to attempt it. There are little over 15 ships in the vicinity now. Another explanation may be targeting. Houthis were likely careful not to actually target a military ship in those opening months, as they don't really want to go to war with the US. But there's also likely internal pressure within Houthis and political posturing that may explain why on the 10th of January, Houthis later said they did target a US ship in response to US previous actions. But crucially, after the US and UK intercepted 21 munitions a bit earlier, US initially did not say their ship was targeted. The reports made it seem as if Houthis were firing missiles in the general direction of the Red Sea. Later, Houthis made their bold claim. And as US strikes started, US President Biden acknowledged that the US ship had been targeted. That might signal US was trying to de-escalate even then on the 10th. Before the US strikes, if Houthis were going for targets 100 miles or more away from Yemeni shores, that was a gamble. The radar on the missile can't really log that far away. Even if a mountain-based sensor can locate the ship, so such missiles are fired in the general direction of an expected target and then the radar seeker searches for a contact and homes in on it while in flight. If comms jamming is involved, as one can imagine, that leaves a huge margin of error. Not only could the military ships be, in theory, accidentally locked onto, but there are over 50 various cargo ships entering or leaving the Red Sea each day, of which only one or two would be Israel-related ships. So Houthis may not have been willing to risk such a mistake. But now that US has struck them, Houthis may not show as much restraint. Indeed, after the US strikes, Houthi spokesperson said they will continue to target commercial ships heading to Israel. What Houthis have likely done in these months preceding the US strikes is they used public data of where commercial ships are, courtesy of services like marine traffic. Using transponders and GPS data, most ships publish their location for their own safety. Houthis could have then used sensors on mountains and recon drones to verify target's location. Then they would need a fairly fast weapon to reach the target, before the recon drone would be neutralized or before the ship could move too far away. Using ballistic missiles helps there, because they're fast. Plus, ballistic missiles have a smaller chance of hitting the wrong ship. They are fed target coordinates right before the launch, and then they generally fall within several hundred meters of their target. Satellite-aided guidance can improve those numbers. 
Yes, ships are on the move, but such massive cargo ships on very busy routes can't afford to change speed or zigzag a lot. That would be unsafe and might cause crashes. One can generally know where the ship is going to be three minutes later. During those three minutes, a small ballistic missile is gonna cover a little under 120 miles, going at an average speed of Mach 2. That being said, GPS guidance is the very minimum one would need to achieve any semblance of precision. Even with it, targeting a moving ship a thousand feet long and 150 feet wide, you'd still sometimes miss. As we know, Houthi missiles did miss with some regularity, so it's not impossible Houthis were testing just pure GPS-guided missiles against ships. In fact, on January 4th, three ballistic missiles were reported striking sea two to nine kilometers away from a cargo ship. That sort of imprecision may suggest Houthis are at times just harassing the maritime traffic with completely unguided missiles. Of course, there are potent guided anti-ship ballistic missiles in Houthi arsenal. A few models have been made to use optical homing heads. Basically, the GPS system gets the missile close enough to the ship and then the homing head takes over and guides it straight into the target. But frankly, due to the number of misses, either those missiles were seldomly used or if they were used, it points to Iranian guidance technology not really working. Binkov wouldn't be so quick to conclude the latter is true. The Houthis showed some of those missiles at their military parades. There's the Falak 1, which may be Iran's Fajr 4 CL. It sports an optical and allegedly a thermal seeker. It's a fairly small missile though, with a warhead of likely not much over 100 kilos. There's also the al Bahr al-Ahmar missile, which is roughly similar in size. Those two models might sort of fit the bill of some attacks so far. They don't do too much damage and due to their limited size, their seekers may also leave some to be desired when it comes to precision. Due to their modest size, said missiles are likely to be traveling at Mach 2 to 3, which makes them interceptable even by less potent US systems such as ESSM and SM2, which are really meant to engage slower aerial targets. SM3 and SM6 are newer and can engage faster targets, like the big ballistic missiles China uses, but they're not available in numbers. Therefore, it's plausible that when the US said it shut down some ballistic missiles, it was shooting down fairly small ballistic missiles, kind of similar to ones from HIMARS, pointing to those simpler missiles we just mentioned or even just unguided ballistic rockets. Houthis have shown even larger anti-ship ballistic missiles at parades, like the Asaf and the Mohit. The latter is an old SA-2 air-to-air missile, which has been repurposed into an air-to-ground one, basically a Kaker 2 m with an optical seeker. Being a conversion project, its capability may be compromised. But Asaf is one of the most potent anti-ship ballistic missiles Houthis have. It's a variant of Iranian Fatah 313 missile, but with an optical seeker. It could be fairly potent due to its size, translating to high speed and a decent seeker. Iran seems to have given Houthis their most potent missile as well, anti-ship variant of their Rod 500 missile. The Houthis call it Tankil, its new generation rocket motor and body construction make it lighter and compact. Besides an optical seeker, it features thrust vectoring, possibly enabling evasive maneuvers. While not necessarily as potent as Chinese missiles, Iranian designs could still be lethal. But there is a lot of uncertainty and bold claims when it comes to Iranian missiles, so Houthi arsenal has to be taken with a grain of salt. That said, it's evident most of their arsenal is in fact Iranian. All of the weapons used so far are in fact not ideal if Houthis wanted to inflict as much damage as possible. Kamikaze drones and somewhat imprecise ballistic missiles with small warheads, those are gonna cause panic to be sure, but not too much damage. But perhaps exactly that was the goal. Houthis may not really want to kill hundreds and to sink large ships, as that might make even the other countries join in and make the US broaden their strikes. So far, strikes were not targeted on Houthi leadership, but on anti-ship capabilities. But if Houthis strike US forces or start deliberately sinking commercial ships, then a concentrated air campaign against Houthi leadership and military power may begin. That might endanger Houthi grasp on the western part of Yemen. After a decade of a bloody war, risking all their gains may not be what Houthis are after. Given that Houthis had already claimed attacking one US ship on the 10th, Actual devoted attacks and not just harassment may be in store, 
and Houthis do have even more lethal systems and other weapon options. US and Allied ships are sometimes just 50 miles away from Houthi shores, and to protect the commercial shipping, they're often dispersed for greater coverage. But if they themselves become targets, then dispersion may become a liability. Even a mighty US Burr class destroyer may in theory be overwhelmed with enough missiles, let alone some of the other non-US ships in the vicinity. For example, the Royal Navy Type 23 frigate holds 32 anti-air missiles and has no dedicated and capable close-in defense system other than its main deck gun. The French multipurpose Aquitaine class frigate holds just 16 anti-air missiles. The Spanish sent an old Perry class frigate, whose anti-aircraft missile rate of fire is awfully inadequate. The Indian Kolkata class holds 32 Barak missiles and 4 close-in guns for a bit better protection. While the US Berg holds 96 missile cells, not all are anti-air. By and large, most missiles on US ships are Block 1 ESSM and SM2s, without autonomous seekers. The advanced ESSM, which has it, only started mass production in 2022. Several Tankil or Asaf missiles fired at the same time may very well push even the best ship beyond its limits. Without autonomous seekers, there's a finite number of guidance channels that the ship's radars can use at any given time, usually three per every several seconds. So a salvo of a few dozen ballistic missiles might indeed overwhelm Borg's defenses. That said, Houthis are not Iran. They do lack the numbers and they likely have issues coordinating very large strikes. So it's not assured they can even manage to fire off enough missiles at once and time coordinate them to approach the ship at the same time. And recent US strikes have impacted their capability, at least a little. Even if they somehow manage to hit one US ship or even a few coalition ships, overall they would only make a dent in the coalition's forces. Biden already said current strikes sent a clear message and that the US will take further strikes if needed. Houthis likely have hundreds of various anti-ship missiles mentioned in this video, not just ballistic ones. Conventional anti-ship missiles too can overwhelm the defenses in a close quarters battle of the narrow Red Sea. If Houthis do attack the US forces or shipping lanes decisively, they could potentially sink or seriously damage dozens of commercial ships in a very short time span once the Allied interceptions are accounted for. And as we saw so far, the US and its allies are also reluctant when it comes to escalation. The US does have many, many forces in the Middle East. Some bases might be in range of Houthis. And if things really go haywire and Iran gets involved, then every single one of those bases might get threatened. If a much wider US-led Allied operation against Houthis starts, we'd be talking about hundreds of aircraft and dozens more ships. Against Houthis, that would be more than enough. Both the missile assembly facilities and Iran cargo routes would be hit and better monitored. A renewed effort from Saudis might happen. Iran might try to increase weapon shipments, but actual weapon numbers reaching Houthis might even fall. Assembly facilities would repeatedly get hit. Locating missile launchers and assembly facilities would not be easy, but every missile Houthis fire would help the US track the launcher vehicle. US military might now has access to nearly 500 spy satellites, including ones that could spot even medium-sized missile launches. AWACS-like platforms could join in in greater numbers, tracking possible Houthi cruise missile attacks. It would be a matter of time before the Houthis would lose most of their missile capability for good. And even if Iranian drones fly close to give Houthis intelligence data, the US might shoot them down, knowing Iran may not afford to retaliate. Certainly, so far, Iran has not shown any serious will to go to war over Gaza. If unaided by Iran, Houthis may hold the nearby seas at risk for some time, but sometime in the future, US strikes or threat of further strikes will prevent them from firing more missiles, and the Red Sea route would once again open up. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.